Well, good morning and welcome once again to Daily Prayer. Today is Thursday the 17th of November. Do you feel free to put something in the comments and uh, let me know that you're praying along with me. As always, we use the form of prayer written by the Reverend David Adam in his book, The Rhythm of Life. We use one of the Bible readings set for today and a reflection on that reading. On Thursday, the theme of our prayers is community. And so we pause and we pray. Blessed are you, creator of all things, the heavens adore you. Let the whole earth worship you. Let all peoples proclaim you. Let all nations obey you. Let us serve you in love and in peace. Come, Lord, and rule. Come into our hearts and fill them with love. Come into our minds and fill them with peace. Come into our lives and fill them with light. Come into our days and fill them with glory. Come, Lord, and rule. And the psalm on a Thursday is Psalm 145. Your faithful servants bless you. I will exalt you, O God, my King, and bless your name for ever and ever. Every day will I bless you and praise your name for ever and ever. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. There is no end to his greatness. One generation shall praise your works to another and shall declare your power. I will ponder the glorious splendour of your majesty and all your marvellous works. They shall speak of the might of your wondrous acts and I will tell of your greatness. They shall publish the remembrance of your great goodness. They shall sing of your righteous deeds. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion, slow to anger and of great kindness. The Lord is loving to everyone and his compassion is over all his works. Your faithful servants bless you. And we continue reading from the book of Revelation and it's a long passage today. We're reading Revelation chapter 12. And uh, you might remember yesterday we had this beautiful kind of hiatus of a glimpse of the end full of hope. And now we descend back into the really tough images in John's vision. Chapter 12. A great sign appeared in heaven. A woman clothed with the sun, with the moon under her feet and a crown of 12 stars on her head. She was pregnant and cried out in pain as she was about to give birth. Then another sign appeared in heaven, an enormous red dragon with seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns on its heads. Its tail swept a third of the stars out of the sky and flung them to the earth. The dragon stood in front of the woman who was about to give birth so that it might devour her child the moment he was born. She gave birth to a son, a male child, who will rule all the nations with an iron scepter. And her child was snatched up to God and to his throne. The woman fled into the wilderness to a place prepared for her by God, where she might be taken care of for 1,260 days. Then war broke out in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon and the dragon and his angels fought back. But he was not strong enough and they lost their place in heaven. The great dragon was hurled down, that ancient snake called the devil or Satan, who leads the whole world astray. He was hurled to the earth and his angels with him. Then I heard a loud voice in heaven say, Now have come the salvation and the power and the kingdom of our God and the authority of his Messiah. For the accuser of our brothers and sisters, who accuses them before our God day and night, has been hurled down. They triumphed over him by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony. They did not love their lives so much as to shrink from death. Therefore rejoice, you heavens, and you who dwell in them. But woe to the earth and the sea, because the devil has gone down to you. He is filled with fury, because he knows that his time is short. When the dragon saw that he had been hurled to the earth, he pursued the woman who had given birth to the male child. The woman was given the two wings of a great eagle so she might fly to the place prepared for her in the wilderness where she would be taken care of for a time, times and half a time, out of the snake's reach. Then from his mouth the snake spewed water like a river to overtake the woman and sweep her away with the torrent. But the earth helped the woman by opening its mouth and swallowing the river that the dragon had spewed out of his mouth. Then the dragon was enraged as the woman at the woman and went off to wage war against the rest of her offspring, those who keep God's commands and hold fast their testimony about Jesus. So there we go. Let me read a reflection on that passage and they're written this week for us by the priest and poet Malcolm Guite. He says this. Now here is a single image worthy of our meditation. 
a woman clothed with the sun, shining out from scriptures which seem to, to so many to have been darkened by the shadows of patriarchy, is this emblem of a woman, not pale and moony and passively reflective, as earlier archetypes had been, but glorious in sun-clad power. As the poet John Milton put it, who is she? Or perhaps we should ask, who was she then and who is she now? In one sense, of course, she is the one through whom Christ is brought into the world. She is therefore God's covenant people, Israel, of whom Messiah, Isaiah said, your maker is your husband, Isaiah 54, and out of whom came the Messiah, not only as the glory of Israel, but also clothed with the sun, a light to lighten the Gentiles. In another more focused and particular sense, she is Mary, not the shy pre-Raphaelite maiden clutching a lily, but the great prophet in Luke, filled with the Holy Spirit and prophesying just that revolution, that casting down of the mighty from their seats, which is the story of the book of Revelation. And because Mary herself is the archetype and emblem of the church, as well as of each believing soul, the woman clothed with the sun is all of us, the believing community right now, still in the anguish of birth pangs, but still in spite of everything, bringing forth Christ to the world. A powerful image of a woman. And so we turn to prayer and we begin with the collect for this week. Heavenly Lord, you long for the world's salvation. Stir us from apathy, restrain us from excess and revive in us new hope that all creation will one day be healed in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And we continue in prayer that the church may show its unity in Christ, that all churches may work together for the benefit of all peoples, that all movements towards unity may prosper, that divisions and conflicts may cease, that the world may find lasting peace, that none may hunger or thirst, Lord, graciously hear us, that the barriers that divide may be broken down, that we may live in unity, peace and concord, that we may come to mutual understanding and care, Lord, graciously hear us. On this day of the week, when the focus for prayer is community, we take time to pray for the community of Purton and the particular streets which are the focus of our prayers this week. Loving God, we do thank you for the community of Purton, for all who live here, all who work here, all who serve the community in myriad ways. We pray for residents of all ages, from the youngest to the oldest, those in toddler groups, nurseries and preschool groups, those in our three school communities and all who work in them. The residents of Courses Court Retirement Complex and Purton Manor Nursing Home and those of all ages in between. We pray for our PCSOs and our local councillors, for those who work at the two doctor's surgeries, the pharmacy and dentists, for community leaders, church leaders, those who work in the library, shops and pubs, for all who help create our community, who volunteer and help others. And this week we pray especially for the residents of Rockingham Drive, Adwalton Road, Winsby Road, Hopton Close and Naseby Road, asking for your blessing, peace and protection for those who live in each home. May they know that they are loved by you. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. And we pray together as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. God be in my head and in my understanding. God be in my eyes and in my looking. God be in my mouth and in my speaking. God be in my heart and in my thinking. God be at my end and at my departing. Lord, be with us to guide us, within us to strengthen us, without us to protect us, above us to raise us, beneath us to uphold us, before us to lead us, behind us to guide us, ever about us this day and evermore. Amen. 
Well, thank you so much for joining me for prayer today. And um, I hope that the rest of your Thursday is good. And if you're able to, we'll be back here for prayer tomorrow at 9.45. Until then, God bless. Bye for now.